You already know how to write Swift UI code, but now it's time to make your app feel alive with a clean shimmer effect that works on anything. Before we dive in, if you enjoy tutorials like this, I'd love to hear your feedback. Hit the like button if you want more Swift UI content like this. It helps a ton and keeps the series going. And if there's something specific you want to learn next, drop it in the comments. Let's build it together. Let's say you're building a Swift UI app and you want to add a cool shimmer animation to your buttons or maybe a little glow on your text labels. Now you could rewrite that shimmer code again and again for every view, but that's messy and boring. So here's where view modifier comes in. It's like building a reusable effect, one box, one tool that you can plug into any Swift UI view, text, image, custom buttons, doesn't matter. You just add dot shimmer and boom, it works. All right, this is our custom modifier. It's called shimmer view modifier and it takes in a few options. Speed, how fast the shimmer moves. Color, what color is the shimmer light? Angle, the rotation in degrees for the shimmer light. It controls the tilt of the shimmer effect. Animate opacity and animate scale. Two little bonus effects if you want to make it pulse or grow slightly. And move, this is the trigger that makes the shimmer move. Now this weird content, this content thing, that's the magic part. That's the view you're applying shimmer to. It could be text, a rectangle, even a full button. So imagine you have a rectangle width and height 100. When you say dot shimmer, this content will be that rectangle. And everything we do next is just layered on top of that view. The shimmer extension. This right here is what lets us use dot shimmer on any view and see those equal something values. Their default values. That means if you just write dot shimmer, you're using speed equal 1.5, white color, angle equals zero straight across. No opacity animation by default is false. No scaling. But if you want to customize it, just pass in what you need. Super flexible. Super clean. All right. Now we start building the actual shimmer. We use overlay and inside that, we drop in Geometry Reader. But wait, what even is Geometry Reader? Think of it like a little Swift UI spy. It tells us the exact size of the view we're applying this to, the width and the height. Why do we need that? Because we're gonna draw a shimmer light on top of our view. And to make that light fit perfectly and move across the view, we need to know how big the view is. Before we draw anything, let's first create the shimmer light itself. And that starts with a gradient. A gradient is just a smooth transition between colors. Here's how we build ours. We start with full transparency on the left. Then we fade into a soft color in the middle. And finally, we fade back to transparent on the right. So the center is where the shimmer is visible, like a highlight. And the sides are invisible, so it blends in as it moves. That gradient becomes our light beam. Now we take that gradient and place it inside a rectangle using dot fill gradient. So imagine it like painting a glowing stripe across a shape. That's the shimmer light. From here, we'll rotate it, size it, and animate it to move across the view. But it all starts with that one gradient. Rotation. This tilts the shimmer. So if you want a diagonal shimmer, pass angle, 45. If you want it straight left to right, use angle, zero. We're setting the size of the shimmer light, the actual glowing rectangle that moves across the view. But why these strange values? Let's explain both. Width. Geometry dot size dot width divided by 2.5. This means the shimmer light is only a portion of the full view's width. Specifically, we're using 1 divided by 2.5, which gives us 40% of the width. So if the view is 100 points wide, the shimmer will be 40 points wide. Why? Because we don't want the shimmer to be the full width. That would just look like a flashing block. Instead, we want it to feel like a narrow beam of light that moves across the view. This thinner size creates that signature shimmer stripe. Then height, geometry dot size dot height times two. This makes the shimmer twice as tall as the view. Why? Because we're going to rotate the shimmer using an angle. And when you rotate a rectangle, the corners swing out and take more space. By making the shimmer taller, we make sure it still fully covers the view even when it's tilted. Without this, the shimmer might not reach the top or bottom and the effect would feel cut off. Now let's talk about offset. This is how we control where the shimmer light starts and ends. Let's break it down. We'll keep this simple. When move is false, we position the shimmer to the left of the view, way outside the screen. We use negative 1.4 times the width of the view. That means the shimmer is pushed about 140% to the left, completely off screen. Why such a big number? Because we want to make absolutely sure that the shimmer starts outside the view, even if the rotation tilts it a bit or it's extra wide. So we give it extra space 
just to be safe. Then, when move becomes true, we shift the shimmer to the right. We move it to 1.1 times the width, that's about 110% to the right. Again, this puts the shimmer completely outside the view on the other side. This motion, from left to right, is what creates the shimmer animation. It starts off-screen on the left, glides across the view, and exits off-screen on the right. Now let's talk about the Y offset, the vertical adjustment. This one isn't animated. It's just for positioning. Remember, we made the shimmer rectangle twice as tall as the view itself. If we don't adjust the Y position, the shimmer will sit too low. It won't be centered. To fix that, we move it up by half the height of the view, that's 50% upward. That pulls the center of the shimmer into perfect alignment with the center of the view. Without this, the shimmer would look like it's sliding too low. This line makes the shimmer move, and more importantly, move smoothly. Let's start inside the parentheses. Linear duration, speed, this creates a smooth, constant speed animation. No acceleration, no bounce, just steady movement. The speed value controls how fast the shimmer travels from left to right. Repeat forever auto reverses equal false. This tells Swift UI. Keep this animation running again and again, forever, but don't go backwards. So once the shimmer reaches the right side, it snaps back to the left and starts again. It's a one-way motion, endlessly repeating. Now the final piece. Value, move. This is the trigger. The animation only plays when move changes. So every time we toggle move, the shimmer resets and animates. That's how we control when the shimmer runs. This line is what starts the whole animation. It runs as soon as the view appears on screen. All it does is set the move variable from false to true. And because we linked our animation to move, that tiny change kicks off the animation. So the shimmer starts off screen on the left. Move equal sign true triggers the animation. The shimmer glides across the view. And because it's set to repeat forever, it keeps going again and again on appear. Move equal true is what gets everything moving. That small delay gives Swift UI time to finish its navigation transition. And then your shimmer starts clean, no glitch, no jump. Don't skip this if you're using navigation. Without it, your animations will act crazy. Let's start with what is a mask. In Swift UI, a mask is like a stencil. It says, only show the parts of this view that match the shape of another view. If the mask is a circle, then only the circle area will be visible. If the mask is text, then only the text shape will be visible. Everything outside the mask, invisible, cut off. That content is whatever view you applied shimmer to. It could be a piece of text, an image, a button, a rectangle, whatever that view is, it becomes the mask. So when we write dot mask content, we're saying only show the shimmer inside the shape of the view we're applying it to. Let's start with scale effect. This controls whether the view slightly grows and shrinks, kind of like it's breathing. Here's how it works. If animate scale is false, we leave the view alone. It stays at normal size. If animate scale is true, then we animate between 0.95 and 1. That means we shrink the view by 5%, then grow it back. It's subtle, but it gives the shimmer a more dynamic feel, like the whole view is alive. Next is opacity, same idea. This lets the view fade in and out gently while the shimmer is running. If animate opacity is false, we keep full opacity, always visible. If animate opacity is true, we fade between 0.5 and 1. That means the view becomes 50% visible, then fades back in over and over. Again, just a soft touch to make it feel more fluid. This is the breathing animation that drives both effects. We use a linear animation over one second. It repeats forever, but this time it does reverse. So it fades out, then fades back in. Shrinks, then grows. This only runs if you enabled either animate scale or animate opacity. If both are off, no extra animation is applied. 